Hello, hello, Robert Mwando here and welcome to Edify. In the previous two episodes, I spoke about how habits are formed. Now, if these episodes helped you improve yourself in terms of what habits you are forming, feel free to share your testimony by leaving a comment. Also, if the topic triggered any thoughts or questions in you, feel free to ask or suggest any other topics you would like us to address on Edify. Today, I will stick to the subject of habits and will share with you seven habits that mark a growing Christian. Number one, growing in the habit of prayer or praying. One of the most exciting experiences in the journey of Christianity is for your prayer to be answered. Our Lord Jesus Christ prayed often. Several times his disciples failed to pray but they were certainly eager to learn how to pray. In Luke chapter 11, verse 1, we read that one time he was praying in a certain place. When he finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us how to pray. I have a question for you. Do you remember when you first accepted the Lord Jesus Christ? Bet you were hungry to learn how to pray. You enjoyed hearing how how more mature believers would flawlessly flow in prayer. You were impressed by every testimony of answered prayer. Over the years, you realize you have grown less enthusiastic about prayer or even learning how to pray. There is no doubt prayer does not come naturally. It is something that we all need to strive to grow in. If we are not careful, our initial enthusiasm and motivation may eventually die down. Number two, growing in the habit of studying the Holy Scriptures. I have used the phrase Holy Scriptures, but in essence, I mean the Holy Bible. It is important to note that other religious beliefs, as well as within the Christian denominations, have books that they revere as Holy Scriptures. Good scholars do well to study what others believe. However, that should not be the primary goal of every Christian who wants to grow in the habit of studying the Bible. Understanding the Bible is crucial for every Christian. A true understanding of the Bible is needed to know the will and purpose of God and to develop a closer relationship with Him. Anyone who finds the Bible offensive or repulsive is either a dead soul or a dying soul that needs to be saved. For the word of God is the bread of life, and rightly so, our daily bread. Number three, growing in the habit of fasting. Though it is the most neglected Christian practice, fasting is a powerful tool that can instantly bring us closer to God. The Bible has much to say about fasting and why it should be part of our Christian walk. The word fast here came from a Hebrew word tzum, meaning to cover the mouth. In the New Testament, fast came from the Greek word nesteo, meaning to abstain from food. How do we then grow in the grace of fasting? The secret to growing in the grace of fasting is purpose. The primary purpose of fasting is to worship God, deny and humble ourselves, draw to Him, grow spiritually, and seek His will for our lives. Anyone who desires to grow in his or her relationship with God must learn to deny themselves, crucify the flesh, and feed the spirit man. That way, you grow a hunger for the godly things and diminish the cravings of the flesh. In your weakness, he says, my grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. That is in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9. Number four, grow in the grace of overcoming sin. In the current era, Christianity has come to a point at which preachers are becoming more careful when addressing the subject of sin. To name and shame sin is equal to being condemnatory. The message of repentance is unpopular. Let's define sin. 
According to the Bible, sin is the transgression of the law. In 1 John chapter 3, verse 4, it is written, Whoever commits sin also commits lawlessness, and sin is lawlessness. The King James Version puts it in this way, Whosoever committeth sin transgresseth also the law, for sin is a transgression of the law. But more to that, it is not just what we do that makes us sin. It is also what we don't do. James said, therefore, to him who knows to do good and does not do it, to him it is sin. That is James chapter 4, verse 17. Number five, growing the habit of fellowship and membership to a local church. With the advent of church online offering multiple options, more and more people stop attending church. In the past one year, the COVID-19 lockdowns, which led to a ban on public gatherings, including closure of worship places, made it even worse. This is a sad trend that seems to continue for many years to come. How about you? Do you still find time attending church services on a regular basis? Do you see the need to assemble with like-minded individuals and become more active in doing God's work? Or do you find things that are more appealing to do on weekends? Hebrews chapter 10 verse 24 to 25 says, Let us consider how we may spur one another towards love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together, as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day is approaching. Number six, growing in the habit of developing the fruit of the Spirit. Tragically today, there is an overemphasis on salvation by grace alone in Christ alone. Not that this is untrue, but to ignore the truth that bearing fruit is a mark of spiritual maturity would be to dilute the gospel of Christ. In John chapter 15, verse 2, 8, and 16, Jesus said, Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes, that it may bear more fruit. By this my Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit, so you will be my disciples. You did not choose me, but I chose you, and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit. God desires that we must be fruitful, to produce not just some, but a lot of fruits. Every growing Christian must bear fruit. It is by their fruit that you will know them. Fruit glorifies God. Fruit qualifies one as a disciple. Fruit attracts reward, but fruitlessness attracts a curse. Number seven, growing in the habit of witnessing to others. We do not bear the tag Christian simply because we were born into a Christian family, baptized, confirmed, and married in church. Not because we go to church every Sunday or whichever day we attend church. The tag Christian was first given to the early disciples in Antioch for one reason. They were Christ-like. They lived the lifestyle of Christ. We, re we read in Mark chapter 1, verse 14, and Luke chapter 4, verse 43, now after John was put in prison, Jesus came to Galilee preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God. He said, I must preach the kingdom of God because for this purpose I have been sent. This was his passion and he left us a charge to go into the world and preach the gospel and make disciples of all nations according to Matthew chapter 28 verse 19. So for your summary, these are the seven habits of a growing Christian. Number one, growing the habit of prayer and praying. Number two, 
growing in the habit of studying the Holy Scriptures. Number three, growing in the habit of fasting. Number four, growing in the grace of overcoming sin. And number five, growing in the habit of fellowship and membership to a local church. Number six is growing in the habit of developing the fruit of the Spirit. And finally, number seven, growing in the habit of witnessing to others. God bless you.